When America is here, you know some multiversal shenanigans are going down. America Chavez, that is, also known as Miss America, comes crashing into the Marvel Universe with considerable style via star-shaped gateways. She's a relatively new character, having first debuted in 2011, but has already accumulated an impressive resume of avoiding dimensional catastrophes, leveling up otherwise moot superhero ensembles, and introducing an amazing level of maturity to comic titles often centered on the young. America Chavez retains a stubborn devotion to do what is right, instilled within her by her mothers, and this internal contest defines the majority of the character stories. Whether she's transporting an entire ship's worth of heroes to the edge of the known universe, or just trying to enjoy college life, America cannot escape who she is and what she believes in. She inhabits a world of gray, as do her readers, but refuses to hide her black and white morality out of fear. America Chavez helps us face our fear of the unknown while steadfastly remaining true to who we are. Think Superman, but with real reality hopping powers. America Chavez at first glance may not be such an imposing figure, but given the chance to show off her abilities, she can be a daunting powerhouse of speed and strength. Her superhuman strength, nigh invulnerability, and ability to fly all lend themselves extremely well to the Superman comparison. Even after joining up with the Young Avengers, a team that also boasts the fearsome Hulkling, America is still the ex machina secret weapon that comes through in a pinch. But perhaps her signature power is her ability to travel between different dimensions and in style. She can open and shut portals that take the shape of stars, even allowing her to travel through time. However, her time-traveling sensibilities are largely unrefined. She cannot control where she goes in time, and it can prove dangerous. Finally, America can usually be seen letting out some aggression through her power stomp. Sometimes she can smash through her star portals using this stomp, but more often than not, it is an offensive measure that can incapacitate her opponent or, at very least, cause them to change their strategic position. Chapter 1. Breathing Room. Vengeance. Numbers 1-6. through six. She's a well-known multiversal traveler, yet America's first trip to another dimension wasn't by choice. The up-and-coming Young Masters, composed of Black Knight, Egghead, Executioner, Mako, and Radioactive Kid, set about terrorizing the previous generation of villains and secure significant financial backing to pursue this endeavor. Their motivations remain vague. This is where we draw the line in the sand. Us versus them. There's too much confusion in our business, and it's up to us to provide a little clarity. Executioner's explanation, ironically, clarifies nothing besides him not being the brains of the operation. What is clear is the capability of their opponents, the Teen Brigade, a group of heroes that are way too cool for their team name. Co-led by America and the Ultimate Nullifier, the team orchestrates the breakout of the in-betweener, the cosmic embodiment of the extremes of the universe. America demonstrates her powers of super strength and flight spectacularly, oftentimes evoking Superman in the way she glides. During her rescue of the in-betweener, they are accosted by the minions of the demonic entity Tiboro. This hardly phases America as she holds them off single-handedly during a battle that pays homage to horror and slasher stories. Panels are splattered with blood in between the demonic talons grasping and pulling at the heroine. Thanks to America's prowess, the demons retreat but the hero is visibly shaken from the encounter. I suppose if I were attacked by an army of demons all at once, I wouldn't walk away unscathed either. Fortunately, she gets plenty of chances to overcome said fear as she battles them two additional times. The first is admittedly on on her terms, allowing the in-betweener to infect her with his energy and attract the horde above New York City. With assistance from Diamond Hellstorm and She-Hulk, America manages to dispatch these guys with little incident. But her second encounter is the stuff of nightmares. So remember the young masters? Well, they're still working to recruit new members and target the child god of mischief, whom they track down to an Asgardian display at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I know, we're juggling a lot of storylines here, but suffice to say, Loki refuses to join. America shows up to protect him, and he banishes her to the sixth dimension for her efforts. Classy, LaFace and classy. America is immediately confronted by ghosts, more demons, and Taboro himself, but absolutely nothing can keep this heroine down as she literally claws her way back to her feet atop the pile of conquered demons. Hellstrom and She-Hulk once again arrive to back her up, but why bother? America performs another Superman stunt by soaring through Tiboro's head, bringing the fight to a close. Before returning home, she makes sure to thank She-Hulk. 
Appreciate the breathing room, guys. Turns out it was exactly what I needed to make a killer move on that nut job. Yeah, the literal son of Satan and She-Hulk were mere breathing room for America Chavez. The teen brigade subsequently traveled to Latveria to head off the young masters and, like clockwork, face off with the demonic horde again. This time, they're pouring through a portal in the sky, and it's some biblical-level stuff. But Nullifier, able to depower whomever he shoots, does so to the in-betweener, causing the dimension-hopping demons to return to their home. In the aftermath, the in-betweener is gone, but the world seems to be back to normal. About as normal as a group of teenagers protecting the world from a demonic horde can be. Also, surprisingly, the Song of Satan is on our side. I don't know, is that normal? But before we continue, make sure to subscribe and leave a like on the video. Plot Armor Comics is a new channel and we appreciate all the support we can get. America Chavez has a thing for teams. She joins one of her more famous ensembles in the Young Avengers, serving alongside Hawkeye, Hulkling, Loki, Marvel Boy, and Wiccan. The parasitic mother brings an invasion of the prime reality Earth 616 when Wiccan, in an attempt to resurrect Hulkling's mom, falls for Mother's facade and brings her back instead. Wiccan's sorcery attracts the attention of Loki, who then attracts the attention of America Chavez. The good mischief deploys his magic, but America is just too stubborn to let him off that easy. She exhibits her mighty powerful stomp, but makes herself scarce once the two are confronted by Hulkling. Hulkling, Loki, and Wiccan visit Asgardia to find a way to stop Mother, but to their dismay, the villain is already awaiting them there in the skies of Lofi, the king of the Frost Giants and the father of Loki. Yeah, he's scary. Right up until the moment America steps in, or plunges in, the impact of her entrance splatters the parasite to bits, leaving Hulkling to comment, I don't know who you are or why you're flying around like a guardian angel, but please keep doing that. We learn that Mother is taking on the form of not just Hulkling's parents, but the parents of each of the young Avengers. This is further evidenced by the sudden appearance of Merica's mothers, who long ago sacrificed themselves to save her home, the utopian parallel. She was only a child when they died, but even then, her morals propelled her from this perfect existence and into the broken world that sat outside of it. Utopia is fine, as far as it goes, but can't do jack for a perfect world. It is her vivid memory of her slain parents that empowers her to understand what Mother's guises are. Along with the other young Avengers, America retreats to Loki's favorite diner, MJ's, where the trickster god catches them up on what they're up against. They confront Mother in her home dimension, wherein it is discovered that everything they're facing is actually the manifestation of Loki's guilt over his past. He confesses his wrongdoings. Mother and the rest of their foes vanish, seemingly an illusion of Loki's doing. The young Avengers return home, but things grow more complicated. Wiccan is the prophesied Demiurge, the sorcerer destined to rewrite the rules of magic. And during her early life in the Utopian Parallel, America actually idolized the Demiurge, going so far as to dress up like him. She even credits Billy by name as she recounts her momentous decision to leave the Parallel. I wanted to be like Moms and Billy and everyone else who inspired me. I was such a fangirl. I can't blame young Miss America for looking up to Billy. As I read the comic, I find myself emotionally anchored in Wiccan as well. But America's confidence and strength makes for an inspiring example of the importance of heroes, even to other heroes. Chapter 3. A Strict Policy. A-Force number 1. Siege. Numbers 1 through 4. Miss America gets in a fight with a Megalodon, and yet Neri is there a Jaws reference in sight. Following the collision of Earth-616 and the Ultimate Universe, Earth-1610, Doctor Doom rules over the battle world, a mishmash of different pieces of both Earths. America initially serves alongside other marquee female heroes in A-Force, an Avenger-style team that defends the islands of Arcadia. The heroes are patrolled when the aforementioned Meg springs from the ocean and nearly swipes America, which now that I think of it probably contributes to her subsequent beef with the monster. After her teammate Dazzler sends the flag flying into town, America sets down to finish it off. Despite protests from the others, America chucks the beast far away into the Deadlands, the graveyard for everything Doom didn't use for his battle world. However, the Meg breaches part of the barrier known as the Shield during its journey. This brings America to the attention of the Thors, Doom thunder-powered policing unit. Sharing a brief goodbye with her A4 sisters, America is then imprisoned at the shield where she will simultaneously guard it against any further damage. 
America is not alone in this fate, it turns out. An entire group of gifted or cursed individuals have been assembled to protect the shield. They are known as Hell Rangers, and America befriends one member in particular, Lady Catherine of Bishop. As you may have already pieced together, this is a variant of America's young Avengers ally, Hawkeye and the two look after each other as the Hell Rangers combat the Annihilation Wave, Ultron drones, and zombified inhabitants of the Deadlands. As they do, both young heroines face their own mortality and the scale of what they fight. Lady Catherine believes it is best to face her fate without fear, though America invites her to become more human. No shame in being afraid. Being brave isn't the same thing as not being scared. You should be scared. I won't let you die, and I won't leave you. This shows what really is one of America's super superpowers. She simply refuses to lose, no matter the situation. And this tenacity obviously benefits those she has come to care for, including her A-Force team and Lady Catherine. Once Kang the Conqueror begins to restore the collapsed Earths, America kicks open a portal for her and Lady Catherine to travel through. Destination unclear, though it's likely they'll return to their posts on the shield. The latter can't help but ask exactly who her new friend is. This isn't the last time we see the duo together, as another enormous this multiverse shattering event brings back the only two who can stop it. I'm just kidding. They're craving pizza and decide to go get a slice together. Some would argue that this is an event. Chapter 4 A Fun Date Secret Wars 2 Number 1 Avengers Number 0 Wait a second. How exactly does Lady Catherine even know what pizza is? That's the question on most readers' minds during America and her friend's domain hopping hunt for the perfect slice. In fact, it's even on America's mind. Nevertheless, Miss America obliges and the two ditch their post on the shield to satisfy Catherine's craving. They first visit the Valley of Flame, an arid desert domain inhabited by Deadpool and Devil Dinosaur variants. They don't have pizza. Next up is the very precise location of some kind of jungle, which the two shortly learn already has residents, a tiger and an old man Logan variant. No pizza there either, prompting America to hasten a quick exit. Yep, nope, let's go. Goodbye, creepy old naked wolverine. Another portal transports them to the remains of Galactus, the world eater, in the land of Egyptia. Undoubtedly creeped out, they jump once again and find themselves in a more pleasant domain. Rule 63. Here, practically every Avenger has been gender swapped, leaving America to proclaim, this place isn't so bad. But the call of the pizza continues to beckon, leading the two through the chaotic arena of Killville, the beautiful and well-chiseled Doomguard, and finally Manhattan. Yes, our Manhattan, where we all know they'll find some good pizza. They pass Squirrel Girl and how the duck as they search. Lady Catherine eventually proclaims she's found the pizza she's been after when she embraces a stray dog carrying in his mouth a pizza box. His name is Pizza Dog, and he'll be my best friend forever, and I'll tell everyone about what a good dog he is. Wait, 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 so this pizza she's been looking for has been the dog? Given what America finds on the actual pizza, maybe that's for the best. Pineapple. Ugh. If reality hopping for a quick slice isn't both crazy and relatable, then having to cancel a promising date in order to close a dimensional tear the size of a planet certainly is. That's exactly how America proves herself to the Ultimates, a team of heroes boasting the likes of Black Panther, Blue Marvel, Captain Marvel, and Spectrum. Given America's ability to both open and close portals, she is no stranger to a task like this. However, given the tear's sheer size, a simple kick will not suffice. She remembers her date, Lisa Halloran, whom she had to cancel on, and comes up with an inventive and romantic way to close the tear. Supplied magical cell service by Loki, America calls Lisa, and the two just dance. I can hear the music through her phone. We're in separate places and we're in the same place, universes apart and together. Evoking the joy of love and kinetic energy of dance, America is able to close the enormous portal. It's a beautiful, innocent scene depicting the euphoric highs of affection and intimacy, all told through a grand moment of superheroics. But can America reach her potential and continue dancing in her duties as an ultimate? Chapter 5 Color Me Impressed Ultimates Numbers 1-12 through 12. America's powers are pushed to their breaking point in a battle for reality itself. To be fair, most of her battles come with some variation of cosmic fate attached, however, she goes up against Galactus the Devourer, or rather, his hunger. Now a part of the Ultimates, America and her compatriots are tasked with dreaming up a solution to Galactus's appetite, preferably one that does not involve him continuing to consume worlds. America investigates the presence of an incubator, the very vessel that housed Galactus back when he was Galen, lone survivor of the planet Ta, and the sixth incarnation of the multiverse. He evolved 
evolved and rested within this incubator until he emerged as the Galactus we all know and fear. It is this mighty piece of multiversal history that America spies on alongside Spectrum. A local warlord has hijacked the vehicle and converted it into some kind of surveillance object. When it spots America and Spectrum, it dispenses Astral Hunter killer drones and the resulting battle allows the heroes a shot at displaying their true power. Even with Spectrum at her most brilliant, she cannot help but be blown away by America's agility and attitude. When a separate squad of the Ultimates, led by Black Panther, confront Galactus, America's star portals are absolutely vital to their victory. First, America and Spectrum bring the Incubator to Galactus via a portal and, as the Destroyer of Worlds is distracted, spawns another portal behind him. Through this portal comes Blue Marvel and Captain Marvel, who, joining with Spectrum, use their energy powers to force Galactus back into the Incubator. He later emerges as Galactus the Lifebringer, no longer feeding on worlds so much as seeding them with life. While America no doubt appreciates the effective utilization of her powers, she becomes taxed as the team continues to place significant burden on the reliability of her abilities. She literally has to open portals deeper and deeper into space, eventually arriving at the neutral zone, the theoretical edge of, well, everything. America even suffers a self-described psychic nosebleed as a result of the strenuous tearing open of space-time. They would eventually encounter one of Blue Marvel's oldest friends and deadliest foes, Anti-Man, formerly known as Connor Sims. However, things immediately become deadly serious when they go beyond the neutral zone. In the void of nothingness they find themselves in, the ultimate ship begins to collapse. America cannot save them this time, as she has fallen unconscious thanks to her efforts so far. This yields a dreamy memory with her girlfriend Lisa, the same one she previously danced with over the phone. While there are some genuinely sweet moments between the two, it's actually America talking about her past that are the most striking. After my parents died, I had to raise myself alone. I had to be the one helping. If people helped me, it's like I'm not doing it right. So, no matter how hard the task at hand may be, America seems resolved to continue helping others. Otherwise, she feels her mother's sacrifice was for nothing. Her growing up up without parents was for nothing. Should she fail to help others, America may feel her entire life may have been for nothing. And thanks to the rechristened Galactus the Lifebringer, America and the rest of the Ultimates are delivered back to Earth, able to save yet another day for those that need her. But the superhero life remains difficult on America, particularly during the strenuous events of the second superhuman civil war. Waged over the inhuman Ulysses Kane's vision of the future, this proved heart-wrenching for the young heroine when attacked by Thanos results in the death of James Rhodes, aka War Machine, and She-Hulk suffering near-fatal injuries. She blames herself, as Spectrum observes. America's taking it hard. Sometimes I forget how young she is. The way she sees it, the reason War Machine's gone is because she wasn't good enough at her job. Given what America said earlier about not wanting help, Spectrum's analysis is almost certainly spot on. Her guilt over her friend's fates combined with her reservations about Captain Marvel's use of Kane's visions ultimately lead her to turn against Marvel in pretty phenomenal fashion. She smacks her with a chair. I've seen realities where predictive justice started up. They're not fun. This leads to a rather brief attempt by Spectrum to subdue the rogue ultimate, but America knows them too well. She knew that Spectrum would go immediately in through her eyes as light, and consequently America dons many portals on her eyes. This deters Spectrum by transporting her to another Earth, described as 2,000 years since the Platonic Wars eliminated humanity as a concept. That's cold, Miss America. And weren't you guys friends like a couple of issues ago? Chapter 6. A Friend of Galactus, but an okay student. Ultimates 2, numbers 1 through 9, America, numbers 1 through 12. If only real life relationships could recover as quickly as those of superheroes. Seriously, not long after taking a literal chair to her face, America recruits Captain Marvel alongside the rest of her former Ultimates team on a mission from Galactus. After the team's harrowing trip outside the neutral zone, Galactus had uncovered a terrifying truth about the embodiment of the universe, eternity. The 
The entity had been chained by the very first universe, the first firmament, as a way of consuming it. At the firmament's disposal is the Maker, Reed Richards of Earth-1610, the Ultimates universe. He summons the titular team from his home dimension, which includes the likes of Captain America, Giant Man, Hulk, Iron Man, and Wasp, and uses them as a personal combat force while he continues with his mission of emerging the realities into one. America tests her medal against Captain America, her first time coming up against another hero sporting the red, white, and blue. When Iron Man entertains the idea of talking things out, Cap rejects the notion and takes the opportunity for a shameless dig at France. You're talking about surrender, and this A doesn't stand for France. Thankfully, Chavez has a much better retort. Yeah, well this America doesn't stand for your she puts Cap on his heels, but ultimately both teams of Ultimates join forces to overthrow the Maker, who has become harming Eternity as opposed to aiding it as he was initially. Spectrum links the heroes' minds together and is able to restore the multiverse from its state of flux. Galactus the Lifebringer looks back particularly fond on his chosen Ultimates and their contribution to his freeing of Eternity. Heralds come and go, and I've had many, but my friends are for Eternity. So, after all the strife that America's membership within the Ultimates had caused her, I'd argue that it paid off for her in the end. After all, who else can walk across dimensions bragging about being a friend of Galactus? After serving as the leader of Galactus's Ultimates, not to mention saving the fabric of reality a few times, America decides to take a little break and focus on herself. To this end, she starts attending college, alongside former Young Avengers compatriot Prodigy at Sotomayor University. It doesn't take long before the school becomes a target. The two heroes turned students fend off a college rager turned cyborg invasion on campus. The consistency of America's character is what continuously impresses me when reading her stories. Her rigid moral compass, her quick temper, and prowess in battle are character traits I always find myself drawn to. Furthermore, America's allusion to the campus's namesake, Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor, is also a nice touch that betrays another poignant thing about Chavez. She's aware of the political figures that shattered glass ceilings, particularly those that look and sound like her. She finds herself in even deeper trouble later when the villainous exterminatrix head of the Midas Corporation tries to take everything from her via attempting to kill her friends. Not to mention the myriad of Chavez clones she sends after her. However, as the heroine explains to the exterminatrix, you failed to consider that I would recognize my own power and worth. You're done, exterminatrix. America discovers a lot of herself in this issue, particularly in understanding her her own heritage and place within the larger Marvel Universe. Taking her leave of the Ultimates, America has one more team thing left in her before wrapping up her story. Chapter 7 One More Team Thing West Coast Avengers Numbers 1-10 through 10. Was it America's nostalgia, her loyalty to Kate Bishop, or some realization that these things just don't let her go quietly that led her to join up with the West Coast Avengers? Perhaps it was all of the above, a mixed combination of the three. Regardless, America's new ensemble is rather rather hastily put together after an apparent lack of talent on the aforementioned West Coast. As a result, Kate brings her boyfriend Fuse, Gwenpool, and America into the fold and even secures funding via the recruitment of Kid Omega. The latter is simultaneously filming a reality television series that guarantees them funding. Things start off on an extremely weird foot as Modoc, now calling himself Brodoc, and inhabiting a sleeker body, begins transforming women who reject him into hideous kaiju. Among his victims, victims is Kate, herself who is now turned into a truly horrifying hawk-human hybrid. It is truly the stuff of nightmares, but thankfully the WCA put an end to it. Kid Omega strikes Bodok with a psychic blast that renders him partially immobile. Then with a weapon labeled Aversa, Hawkeye forces the villain to revert to his normal grotesque looking self. Aversa is Latin for back, and in this case, to return to one's former self. These villains should really consider printing some instruction manuals rather than, you know, stenciling your evil plan onto your evil weapon. After the city is saved, America starts dating Fuse's sister, Ramon Watts, having saved her and Lucky the Pizza Dog from collapsing debris. When teased about the two's connection by Kate, America is quick to shoot her friend a death stare. The team would later face Madame Mask and a convene of vampires, but none would ever quite match the bizarre nature of Brodock's schemes. I mean, how exactly do you top something like that? I do petition we permanently 
rename him to Brodock, though. That is just too genius to get rid of. Chapter 8. Typical Older Sibling. America Chavez, Made in the USA, Numbers 1 through 5. America Chavez can explore many different futures, yet her own past remains shrouded in darkness. She remembers abandoning the utopian parallel for the imperfect world that needed her help, but fails to recall a great many details pertaining to her life there. A woman claiming to be from her past named Catalina has targeted America, drawing her attention by setting fire to the latter's childhood apartment. She eventually tracks Catalina down using some surveillance footage, then chases her to the utopian parallel. Unfortunately, this is a trap that leaves America incapacitated. Catalina takes the opportunity to explain the situation. She is actually the heroine's sister, and America's memories of the utopian parallel are actually distorted versions of her real ones. Turns out America and Catalina are the daughters of two famous scientists, Amalia and Elena Chavez who worked tirelessly to solve the dilemma of Edge's syndrome. This vaguely defined genetic disease affects both girls' ability to harness the body's cosmic energy, thereby disrupting the use of their powers. As the symptoms worsen, the disease slowly drains America and Catalina's gifts, eventually taking their lives. A billionaire by the name of Mr. Gales initially funds the research into Edge's syndrome, but loses his way in pursuit of the girl's power. This leads Amalia and Elena to flee with the girls, but to no avail. In a desperate attempt to escape, America opens a portal and jumps through with her sister's hand in hers. But Gales grabs a Catalina, sending America falling through the portal alone. As she surfaces in the water outside the island, she observes it awash in flame, concluding that her real family has perished. She would eventually be found floating on the water by another family of the Santanas, who would serve as her adopted family. Beginning again, her memories of that tragic origin would fade, replaced by a more fantastical version involving collapsing realities and heroic intentions. But her love for her real parents shines through even in her constructed history. After all, what inspired America to become a hero? The sacrifice of her two mothers in this utopian parallel fantasy crafted through shades of reality. America takes this time to reflect on what this revelation means for her going forward. It's been more than a little weird, remembering everything, but it's been good too. I've always spent so much time thinking about my past I ignored what was right in front of me. Haven't we all, America? I'm certainly guilty of overlooking the good things in my life, but America remembers the sobering truth of her past. She still has Edge's syndrome, with it progressing a little more every day. In her own way though, America remains hopeful, and always ready to fight for the cause. She and Ramon split amicably, leaving America the space to piece her life back together following these substantial revelations. Imagine you're given the chance to essentially recreate yourself, informed by everything you've learned up until that point. It remains to be seen where her star-shaped portals will take America Chavez next. Do you want to face the unknown without fear, proudly proclaiming who you are through your righteous actions? Well, that's what America Chavez is here for. She's a hero that cannot escape who she is and what she believes in. When America's around, you can bet there are going to be multiversal conspiracies afoot. And yes, those will come in gray, but America isn't afraid, so neither should we be. Alright, well that does it for this video, and thank you for checking out our latest Plot Armor Comics video. I'm Morse Code, and we'll see you in the next video.